Welcome. My name is Kelly. My name is Jamie. And I'm Jake. And I'm Nathan. <laughs> and this is Fanimated, an animation Yay. fan podcast where we get a chance to geek out about our favorite animated media. How are you guys doing today? So good. <laughs> I'm great. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, a longtime listener, first time caller. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. First time yes. here on, on the show. I'm just like a regular kind of good, like not a weird kind of good, <laughs> like what Nathan said. <laughs> just a regular kind of good. Just a That's regular good. kind of sleep deprived good. I, yeah, I should have answered instead of good. I should have answered like, oh, you know, I'm like, ty- I'm kind of hungry. Um, I could go for like <laughs> some food. Yeah, teetering on yeah. teetering on it's the like, edge of despair. <laughs> not energetic at all. <laughs> oh no! Walking the razor's edge. <laughs> I think razors. This is this is real. This is real life. Well, that was a quote that's relevant to this. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be it. This is gonna be the craziness that that happens um, with having four people on a podcast, which is the the most people <laughs> that I've had on this podcast at one wow. time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, welcome, um, Jamie. Of course, is on the show all the time. I'm sure you heard his voice before, Jake. <laughs> uh, we were actually talking about a previous DreamWorks film, The Prince of Egypt. Um, yeah. As well as, yeah, yeah. oh, what did we Samurai say? Jack. Samurai Jack, that's yes. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. really early nice. days of the podcast. We did Samurai Jack. That was really fun. Um, and Nathan, and not our normal fanimated Nathan, a, a new Different Nathan. Nathan. I'm a new Different Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> new Nathan. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to your first time on Fanimated. Yes. It, it doesn't feel like an abnormal situation because i'm doing a podcast with jamie and jake which is what we yeah, do yeah <laughs> and we're all sitting in our respective places <laughs> yeah we've got the yeah. microphones we've got the whole setup it's i feel like i'm doing a night's quest episode with kelly but that's right. not what we're, yeah. that's not <laughs> what we're doing not at all. we're doing at all <laughs> Exactly. Um, so yeah, so those who uh, the listeners that don't know, uh, Nathan, Jamie, and Jake are part of and make up all of Night's we Quest. Which yeah, we is, are uh, Night's Quest. You are yeah. not only, just parts we're of all, it. You are the we're whole. We're all shareholders of Night's Quest Incorporated. <laughs> yes, it's true. We are now. <laughs> we're the board of directors. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, which, of course, uh, does anyone want to give the audience a little snippet of what Night's Quest is and where to find yes. it? Yes. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I've been practicing. Night's Quest is an improvised comedy fantasy podcast that is available in all platforms that have podcasts um, where we follow the adventures of Rainer, the the bard, and his uh, menagerie of friends as they uh, fight spirits, eat crazy food, and somehow make a plot happen. We still don't know how that (laughs) Tumbled out of sometimes mouse. being dragged into a story but yes <laughs> yeah yes. yeah um i know i for one find it quite enjoyable um so highly recommend of course thank you um and i i've been wanting for a very long time to have all of you on the podcast to yeah. just just because you guys are together are hilarious and (laughs) i i thought you know what what is a good topic of conversation for fanimated for you three uh and of course the obvious answer is something that is funny um adventurous Mm -hmm. um fairly whimsical and so of course i came to the conclusion why not road to el dorado of course (laughs) of course I, I need course. to ask when you when you uh, suggested the idea of doing the road to El Dorado, did you already know that Jake did at one point or possibly still does have this movie memorized? Yeah, <laughs> you know I'm pretty sure that um, somewhere in my college experience I did know that. So. <laughs> there you go, excellent. Yeah, excellent. Josh Palmer and I did like the whole movie once. Well, at least until people got tired of it and they were like, okay, this was funny and now it's just we happening. got the bit. It's been thirty yeah. minutes. Yeah. Well, now that we went on a rant about our college friends for 10 minutes, yeah. um, let's talk about Road to El Dorado. Um, my should. first question always is, uh, what's you know your history with the film? When did you first watch it? How much yeah. have you watched it? Um, do you have the whole movie memorized? <laughs> well, I'd like to take that last part. Um, and yes. Yeah. Um, I definitely... So... 
Okay, I have to do a quick. This wasn't part of my notes. I need to know when the movie came out because that will inform 2000. many March thi- of 2000. Oh, okay. damn. Bam. She got it. Trivia awesome. ready. I got it. Okay. I did so, a little research. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I was in middle school. Holy moly. Wow. <laughs> middle school Jake. It's a very different time. But, yeah, I freaking love that movie. I watched it so many times. The soundtrack is amazing. The plot mm. is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I do have it memorized. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen all the special features on the DVD. Oh, nice. nice. Always good. Always good. Boy, the special features on DVD, just that phrase is like a different time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there were that. like there were like interviews with all the characters and like director commentary and then they had the Elton John like solo music yeah. video where it was just him and a piano but then they animated him for half of it page master what? style oh, what cool. i have to find this okay yeah it's somewhere out of the blue um cool. was the song and he like comes in like playing his piano being elton john and then yeah. they like make him like cartoon elton john and he's like walking through el dorado like mm. singing and narrating with miguel and awesome. tulio it's really cool that's really really cool uh i've definitely seen it at least Probably at least twice when I was a kid. Um, and then probably not for quite a while until we decided to do this episode. So, <laughs> so this was another one where I, I watched it um, and I remembered some things, but a lot of it felt like watching a new mm-hmm. movie. And that's always so cool. That's always right. so exciting. Um, when you kind of have the false sense that you know everything that's going to happen and then stuff happens, you're just like, I do not remember that (laughs) yeah i did not remember how much flirting and implied stuff there was in this movie (laughs) yeah oh yeah (laughs) yeah i had a a similar experience i saw it when i was younger watched it a tiny was a part of the just the collection of movies we had it was actually funny in preparation for this i was like oh i should watch it again and it's not online anywhere i'm like well i know my parents have it so i went home and we dug through the dvds and i find the case i'm like great i'll watch this at home i open up the case no DVD in it. No. Oh, no. Oldest trick in the like, book. I was like, no, this is awful. But then I remembered we have the VHS of oh, the movie. No. And so I took home our cube TV. That's like yes. a foot and a half. Uh-huh. The, the combo yes. TV VCR. That yep. TV I, was yes. the size. I swear that was like the size of a loaf of bread. I remember seeing that in our living room and just being like, what is this? Oh, it's bigger than a loaf of bread. It, it's Not it by the, much. The length of a loaf, maybe. Sure. And so, yeah, I watched it on there, and like just watching it on the VHS, I think, helped it's probably enhance the experience. The experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, nice, absolutely. Nice. Yeah. And, yeah, again, I forgot. I had not picked up on many of the cues or themes of the movie when I was Layers. a kid. So now I, I appreciated a lot more stuff that I'm older. I'm like, wow, this movie holds yeah. up. Yeah, I I did not watch this much as a kid. It wasn't one that we had in our uh, VHS library. Right, um, right. Your tape but, deck. Your repertoire. Yeah. <laughs> but it was uh, definitely one that I um, enjoyed later on in life and still do quite a bit, um, yeah. especially being um, such a big DreamWorks fan as I am. Uh, so definitely, definitely way, way up there, especially the... The original DreamWorks films are just yeah. phenomenal, and I love them, including this one. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know and have been living under a rock for two decades, um, <laughs> maybe in a secret city. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe they're living in a secret city. Maybe in a secret city made a goal. Full circle, baby, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> the Road to El Dorado um, is a film, uh, 2000, a DreamWorks animation film about. Miguel and Tulio. Oh, yeah. Tulio and Miguel. Tulio and Miguel. (laughs) Mighty and powerful gods. And uh, they are uh, two con men swindlers who basically, through a series of uh, unfortunate circumstances, find themselves... um, Nice dodge of copyright right there. That was beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Series of unfortunate circumstances. (laughs) my favorite book series yeah <laughs> yes by by uh, lime snickers yes <laughs> you killed me you've killed me <laughs> yeah let her finish <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that's too good no that was too good that was good anyways yeah. miguel and tulio 
um, find themselves uh, <clears throat> stranded with a, uh, just so happens to be a map to El Dorado. They uh, are on this journey to get to El Dorado, be rich. Yeah. General, uh, general wants and desires and it, in, 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 up being this whole adventure and things. And that's yeah. my basic synopsis at the end. <laughs> I, you're just right reading the, the back of the disc box, aren't yeah, you? Right. <laughs> Right yeah, that sounds page, verbatim. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, it's it's very professional. I, you know, d- put a lot of time and effort into <laughs> okay. but putting if, together a nice synopsis. If if you picked up a movie and that was the description on the back, you you can't tell me you wouldn't be a little curious. <laughs> I'd already be watching it. <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely watch that. Desires, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it it's funny. Yeah. It's wild. It's um a, a, a lot of fun. So. 90 um, minutes of action-packed comedy. Yeah, you know bet. What, what, what's real? What I found out while I was I just a cursory Google. It wasn't even that much research, but I found out this movie did not do well. Like it actually kind of bombed in theaters. It did. Shame. And That's weirdly, it. has become like much more popular later on. Um, to the point that yeah. people have written articles and articles about like why do why does the newer generation love the Rotel Dorado so much? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to like analyze the reasons why and stuff. It's very it's interesting. Good. Yeah. It's got meme potential. It's very memeable. Up the wazoo. <laughs> it's so memeable. <laughs> so many. Memes. It's hilarious. Yeah, I don't know why, but like I, what I found interesting as far as like budget is concerned, like. If Rotel Dorado had a budget of ninety five million dollars. The wow, Prince of Egypt yeah. budget was seventy million. And oh, I'm like, huh. Whoa. That's like a v- pretty significant difference yeah. for two vastly different films. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was I'm, I'm I'm sure like a lot of it probably comes down to technology. Like, a, a, a lot of movies during that time period, like, um, I mean, Tarzan, an entirely new software, was created to do mm-hmm. all of the three-dimensional work within that film. Oh, and yeah. Road to El Dorado was such a blend of classical 2D animation and mm-hmm. 3D animation. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of it was technology. And also, StarCast. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Half of what, it went to Elton John, you know? What is... <laughs> Basically, as soon as 3D animation was uh, deeper utilized into films um almost every movie that comes out nowadays or they they've got to create completely new software for whatever they need um oh. you know to do whether it be rapunzel's hair or elsa's mm-hmm. snow you know there's like they've every wow. new film has their own needs and they've got to like redevelop a whole new system to mm-hmm. you know manipulate the environment in a way that looks realistic um so, yeah, I would probably agree with you. It's probably a lot of technology-based things. I didn't um, know that. Speaking of Elsa Snow, they used the technology that made the snow in that film to solve a cold case, which I think is amazing. Wait, oh. what? Yes. <laughs> this is a sidetrack, but I need to hear the story, please. The, the snow technology from Frozen was yeah. so accurate to real life that they were able to use that software and that engine to recreate the events of a cold case of a group of russian hikers who were up in a mountain who were found under mysterious circumstances and their their the reason for their deaths had never been solved um i think i've heard of this cold case before yeah they solved it there was a a bunch of campers like the tent was torn open from the inside they all had strange injuries some were found like down like hundred like miles away irradiated um they used the software to recreate the time and events and found out that it was just an avalanche which was the simplest solution from the get-go but the least easy to believe but recreating it makes total sense with the frozen software that's wild i'm looking that up later (laughs) i i really hate that that was based on a movie called frozen right (laughs) yeah wow let it go okay Okay. This feels okay, weird okay. To, to joke about. I feel bad at myself. Why was that no. a punchline? Why? <laughs> I feel like that was like a long Guys, joke. We're going to wow. talk about El Dorado. You got to let it go. <laughs> okay. We're talking about El Dorado. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dorado. Going back to El Dorado, though, yeah. for real. Right. Um, <laughs> basically, there's a, a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I lot. say let's just <clears throat> start it out with Miguel and Tulio, the mm-hmm. best duo and characters in general. Um, 
what do you love about them and what are your some of your favorite quotes moments just pieces of these crazy yeah. characters oh wow because they make the whole movie, honestly. They are. So. They they are the best part of the movie. Uh, is there? They're like they're the heart. They're the yeah. yeah. I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild stance and say it's I, I don't think it's just because of how funny they are. Um, I think one of the things I like even more than that is how how solid their relationship is as far as like mm-hmm. characters and story goes because they are rather than just like two people who are kind of in the same situation and joke with each other a lot they are so well defined in their personalities from the beginning of the movie when they're running away from the 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 medieval cops they there's a bit where they're like uh they get to the edge of a roof right and they look down and there's the two barrels of water and Tulio is freaked out, and Miguel looks at him with this big smile, and he says, I bet we can make that. And that is, like, the that is such an incredible character moment, because in the first, like, four minutes of the movie, you already know the difference between these two. Even though they're yep. similar in some ways, and they have similar goals, you get um this, that single moment where, like, uh, also Tulio saying, I, I mean, I, I bet you five of this currency that two we pesetas, can't. Two pesetas. Pesetas. Thank you. Uh, that we can't, but he does jump anyway. He jumps after him. So, like, you get such a good grasp of how they Mm -hmm. are partners and they are in this together and they're absolutely ride or die. But you also get a really clear grasp of the way that they are different and how that could become important later. And that's such a great thing because it impacts the rest of the movie. Like, I absolutely adore that opening scene, yeah. Miguel is the dreamer. Tulio yeah. is the realist, but also the money focused guy. I-, I think what you're saying too about how compacted the script is. Like I forgot the movie's only ninety minutes, hour and a half. But yeah. it-, it feels like so much happens in that time. Like they get to um El Dorado and the New World really quickly within the in the you know, first oh, yeah. fifteen, twenty minutes of the even less than that of the of the movie. Mm-hmm. But it feels like they went on this long epic journey, but really it was only a couple couple montages. But yeah. they do such a good job of keeping things moving and having all of the the um, dialogue be so dense that they're able to carry a lot. There's no filler or fluff content. It all is is well packed in there. Okay, I want to talk about I want to talk about Miguel and Tulia really quick, and then yep. I want to blow all of your minds. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, Ray, can't wait. I love exactly what you're saying, Jamie. Miguel and Tulio feel like real characters they feel lived in they feel believable and they feel whole um like like nathan like you said miguel is the dreamer he's the whimsy he's the the sense of adventure and tulio is grounded he's the pragmatist he's the one who he's got the little voice that says when you're going too far and they do that the first time you see miguel and tulio in the film they show that miguel wants to keep gambling he wants to go for more tulio says we have enough we don't need the stupid map we have the money let's just get out and go (laughs) and like always miguel convinces him to Mm. go for it um and that bet is so good because they do that multiple times throughout the film they bet Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and sometimes it's pesetas, sometimes it's gold when they're in El Dorado, but that, that constant back and forth give it's and take. Life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you ready? Laura Mines. Ready. The sure. whole movie, the whole plot is driven by water. Water moves the plot forward. Okay. The opening shot of the movie after the epic opening credits by Elton John, is Love water it. flowing into a fountain, which is then picked up by Cortez, who then later throws it at a wanted poster of Miguel and Tulio. The water, the poster gets soaked and it fades into the real scene that's happening. Uh, okay. okay. They jump into, well, barrels. vinegar, but liquid filled buckets, barrels, that then get put onto a ship. Water carries them to the new world in the boat. They follow the river. To get to El Dorado, they pass through the waterfall to get to the city. Yeah, and the sea wrecks their ship and kickstarts that whole part of the plot when they get uh, stranded. Yeah. Um, Water moves the plot forward. Hmm. Oh, okay. Right, and then it's the water that pushes them out of El Dorado. And in the end, yeah, it's the water that takes them away from El Dorado. Interesting. I like that. I'm I'm Um, on board with this. 
Oh, and the water's where, like, the big bad, he falls into the water at the end. That's where the gold goes. Right, the to gold Shibalba. is, is Shibalba. Shibalba. <laughs> Shibalba. Um, yeah, water is also what creates um, Shaka Khan's giant, like, leopard creature magic. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, of course and and it in the is. opening oh, sequence, goodness. the city rises from water. Right. Yeah. Yeah, water, water okay. is the plot. Wow. Um, you have succeeded. My mind is Whoa. blown. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good analysis right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, and water is inevitably what, what saves them. Wow. That's true. Wow. Goodness. Well, well, wow. well. Rather than gold, yeah. 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 A plus anal- uh, analytical report that was right really there. Good. Yeah, yeah. Your, your, your paper gets a <laughs> passing remark. <laughs> yeah, I never, yeah, I've never made that, those connections at all. Um, I, I definitely didn't. Yeah. You only get that yeah. once you memorize the script. You right. Know, that, <laughs> you get the, that unlocks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The d- true yeah. meaning. Yeah. Right. Yeah, El Dorado, any percent water run. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stop. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. I'm so tempted to just list the funniest things they say, but I know I know we need to use our time for other things. Well, I mean, I, on that subject, like, a ton of the script was, was improvised. Which really? Is, oh. Yeah. oh yeah. Well, that, that honestly makes sense, yeah. 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 Again, if, if you watch the uh, director's commentary and the character, uh, the, the actor profiles of the DVD extras, um, there's, like, <laughs> mul- <laughs> there's, like, multiple times where, like, Kenneth Branagh and Kevin Klein are talking about... Um, just like working in the studio together because they had um like they were always in close proximity like this the scene where they were uh the the con where they were sword fighting air quotes sword fighting to get themselves out of a sticky situation Mm -hmm. they were in the recording studio with fake sabers like oh wow exchanging what verbal and literal blows just kind of you know to get and a lot of those lines were made up on the spot like um when uh i'm trying to remember I think it's Kevin Klein that says it because Miguel. No, 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 no. It's it's uh, Kenneth Branagh that says it, um, um, because he says, "Let your sword do the talking," and then he responds with, "I will," and it will be loquacious to have fought. And <laughs> loquacious is this big, stupid, flowery word that just means talkative. Yeah. Um, and like that was completely made up on the spot. Um, wow. And That's I think so it just cool. feeds into how, like the realism of the characters is like these are two professionally well-trained classically taught funny people mm-hmm. who yeah. are just funny and they're good at being funny in a in a in a smart way so like of course yeah. their characters would also be that way and they have good chemistry to be able to it just is. bounce off of each other like that yeah, yeah. That's key. that that leads me to a question as you guys are all three in Improvising comedians on your show, like, (laughs) um, like, how are you able to like keep up? You know, uh, you you have restrictions to your your characters that you play and the world that you're in, um, and how do you work within those restrictions to like just come up with things on the spot and also make it really entertaining? Hmm. I feel like oftentimes it is the restrictions of the character that gives us the most freedom of yeah. comedy yeah. because we only have, we have certain rules to play by. We have, we have Lego, we have building blocks to build mm-hmm. jokes from with each character. And so we have a loose kind of script of things that we can say and do. I mean, like certain characters like Leroy have ongoing bits. Um, mm-hmm. And so yeah. like as, as well as following with those, breaking from that mold creates humor. And mm-hmm. um, I, th- I think it is having like well-established characters and relationships and knowledge within those characters that allows the funny to happen in the yeah. same way that like Miguel and Tulio are so well-established and they have such good chemistry. Like they know what that person is. So it's easy to understand like what, what is funny in this person. Yeah, I think it's all about diving into that character, like actually being that person, like not just trying to think of, oh, what would be a funny thing? It's no, what would this character say? And this character is funny. And so by them doing what they do, and obviously not every line is going to be a joke, but they usually build to a joke or just like, oh, the way that they view the world is comedic in comparison to this other character that we then just try to live out. Or even if it's a serious situation or something yeah. serious going on, 
it is ridiculous from an outside perspective from, yeah. from a listener or from a watcher even though the characters are dead serious yeah the situation is asinine <laughs> right i think no. uh i think a very real part of that for me is um to answer the question i think i would say i'm still working on it <laughs> and like <laughs> like like totally honest i that is something that i at different points while working on night's quest i've felt really unsure about really nervous about really like uh critical of how i've played the game and done the show and stuff and in a very real sense part of the answer is just keep doing it just keep practicing like and you get better and you start to be able to figure out some of the stuff that nathan and jacob said and you start to realize how you can uh make that work with improv yeah there's something really cool cool about that because you you keep you keep getting better yeah yeah Cool. That's uh, that's really cool. I love to hear hear about uh, uh, just how it works for you guys. And um, yeah. yeah, obviously, like it can create a lot of really genuine um, moments in a story, just like here with Road to El Dorado. So speaking of genuine moments, can I can I talk about my favorite scene in the movie? Yes, absolutely. Please. Which is which is a serious. A ser- it's a serious beat. OK, um, I don't think I would have said it was my favorite as a kid, but I definitely appreciate it on this rewatch. It's the scene where Miguel and the chief are on the boat, and the boat is done, right? The boat is finished. They're supposed <laughs> to be able to go home. But Miguel wants to stay, right? He wants to stick around, and so he's trying to find oh, reasons yes. why the boat isn't finished, right? He's yes. like, it's, you know, oh, this isn't good enough. It doesn't have and enough rope. It need more it rope. D- needs more <laughs> rope, right? And so it is funny, but <clears throat> the chief, who is so chill, he's, he's probably the best guy. Like in the movie, He's like that, a like the genuine, like character. goodest person. That's yes. Not a word. Um, <laughs> He's figured it out, right? He's figured out that they're not gods. Probably from the get go. Yeah. Probably from the get go. Like, because he was never a religious man to begin with. <laughs> he didn't care about that. He, and so you have this really cool moment where he's saying, like, you know, if you just want to stay, you can, you can just stay, and I, I forget what exactly. Um, Miguel says, sure. but he says something like, you know, I, I was wrong. You know, uh, you know, it'll. Oh, he says, I can't stay. I've got big plans in the other world with Tulio. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he ends up changing his mind saying that he is willing to stay. Mm-hmm. He makes a mistake. And then the chief says, well, yes, to, to err is human to quote them from mm-hmm. earlier. Yeah. I was loving that callback. little and beat. That, that, he's, that little smirk. <laughs> right. In that one line, he's saying, I know you're human and yeah. I still want you to stay. I still want you to stay here because Miguel has shown that he cares about the people of the city, that he's genuinely just like here to have fun. And he, they've made improvements, right? They stopped human sacrifices. So the chief is like, <laughs> I like you guys, even though you're not gods. I want you, the real you, the human you to stay here. And I thought that was such a beautiful little exchange. It is. And if it had ended right there, it would have been a nice, happy movie. But of course, sadly, they don't get to stay. They do have to leave. Yeah. Um. It's That's bittersweet, fun. yeah, when they have to genuinely consider. When Miguel is the one who uh, spends a lot of time considering if he truly wants to stay or leave, and mm-hmm. eventually they both have to make that decision. And you know, Even though it's mm-hmm. a lot of jokes, a lot of good times, yeah. it's also very, very moving, yeah. It's one of the examples of, in this movie, again and again, they always, like, tie things back mm-hmm. and have, like, really, yeah. really satisfying um, just – callbacks to previous things and that little oh to eris to human is one of those it just lands so well and it's fantastic and this movie is just chock full of them i love oh yeah (laughs) another fantastic one um that bookends from the beginning of the movie is Mm -hmm. the 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 initial con is is, you gave me loaded dice yeah it's playing (laughs) and and it's what miguel and tulio talk about when miguel wants to go and explore the city and tulio says we just have to keep playing the one against the other and so at the end or close to the end when um sako khan figures it out yeah yeah. and he comes after them um and there's this (laughs) beautiful you are not gods and miguel just panics and he goes straight to comment you're not a god (laughs) and it's funny you gave me loaded dice (laughs) and it's funny in that moment because it's the con but so much has happened that miguel isn't acting anymore Mm, yeah because because at that point there's been the whole business with Chell, and Miguel doesn't want to leave, but Tulio's mm-hmm. trying to be the pragmatist and stick to the plan. Um, exactly. 
Um, and so then there's that like glorious moment where you start to wonder you, we, the audience is conned that we mm. fall for it yeah. because Miguel is as far as we know, not playing along until finally they punch him together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're still friends. They still, you know, they're, they're screaming, they're emotional, they're punching each other. And like, mm-hmm. if you don't remember how that first con went, it looks like they're, uh, everything is falling apart. And then mm-hmm. they suddenly turn and punch him at the same time. And it's so good. <laughs> well, I just noticed too, that line you said of, we have to keep playing the one against the other continues even into the last um, face off against the antagonist of um, Zekulkan versus Cortez, where then he plays them oh. against each other. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But in the end, it's all about Miguel and Tulio right. together. Mm-hmm. That's their yeah. goal always is to be together. Right. <laughs> Just a little cute little <laughs> button on that <laughs> note. <laughs> Speaking of Cortez, what a phenomenal overarching antagonist. Mm. Absolutely. Jim Cummings, voice actor for that, crushed it. I was like, oh, have I, I think I've heard his voice before. I'm going to go see what else he's done. And like, there's 800 results. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go do something else. I don't have just time. Like that opening monologue where he finds them on the ship. And it's just, my crew was as carefully handpicked as the disciples of Christ. It's just like, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Tell me about it. It's so when we it's put so... into port in the sugar plantations of Cuba, you will be flogged some more. It's just, yes, oh, such a good antagonist. It's, it's so, like, resonant and serious and just, like, an incredible bit of monologue. And then it's <laughs> there's a couple beats of silence and Miguel's like, all right, Cuba. <laughs> uh. And Cortez is on screen so little, and yeah. it really proves what they can do with a little amount yeah. of time because he leaves a, quite the impression, mm. and he is the overarching antagonist for the entire thing. You do not want him to get into El Dorado. Right. <laughs> nope. He, he is Zekel Khan's, like, prophesized god. He is what he yeah. thinks is coming to save his ideal of El Dorado. The warrior god. Yeah. With, like, fire and brimstone and death and purging the streets with blood and that's right yeah. Yeah. um there's one character we definitely haven't talked about yet and that's oh, chell and she's amazing oh, i just want to oh, say yeah. that gotta talk about chell gotta talk about chell i was definitely yeah. on a different beat there but yes let's talk about i thought chell. you were going to talk oh, about I'm, altivo the if horse. there's something else you want yeah. to finish with, with the with <laughs> no, altivo no. the horse is a we shockingly well-defined to, character yeah, well, altivo well, well, the horse inspired the tangled horse i mean they're right. the same horse <laughs> basically me wrong they're the same I mean, horse. They're both the horse of like a military officer <laughs> that mm-hmm. like white. escapes and takes the like main screen for the majority of the film. Um, they have the same wit. They have the same comedy to them. Yeah, yeah. They're both same dogs, horse. basically. Same horse. <laughs> I want to talk about Shell. Kelly had the right idea. We yes, should talk yes, about absolutely. the third main character of the movie. <laughs> I would argue there's four, and one of them is Altivo, but fine, let's talk about Chell. I would, I would check on the Altivo is in the movie before Chell. He's on the cover of the box on front and center. He is part of the Godhead trio. Sure. Okay. He's the reason right. they shipwrecked. But Chell. Yes, fine. Let's, but yeah, let's talk about Chell. Yeah. Chell is... I, I'm so impressed by... Uh, there's a couple of scenes where she's introduced where she hasn't even talked yet, but... The the animation for her face and where she's looking and her mm. expressions is so incredibly specific. There's a bit where she says she says a very short greeting that isn't super important. It's like, oh, my lord's welcome or something like that. And then just through the way her face looks, you pick up the non-existent line of play along. Help me out here. We mm. got to make this work. I like, am she doesn't also see a any of that. It's I'm just also a through, con artist. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the two of them pick up on that. And, like, it's such a great bit of silent, like, the audience figuring stuff out just by watching this wordless exchange. I love it yeah. so much. Yeah, so. yeah, it's that, yeah. like, um, it's where she runs out and the guards catch her stealing gold. And she's like, I was sent to give tribute to the gods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> no, There's just... so much good... Uh, animated body language in, in the whole film like everyone's got their own um uh ways to do that but chell chell has a lot of that and it's really really well done and ex- well well executed 
which again, we as we mentioned, when I was younger, I did not pick up on half of what Chell was communicating non-verbally. Let's just right, say. right. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like Chell is definitely the the adults in in the movie. Mm. <laughs> like 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 every every kids movie has layers, and every kids movie has stuff for the parents as well as the kids. And I feel like Chell was like the the parents conduit of like, oh, that's the these are the jokes I look out for. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I get yeah, that. Absolutely. In in a way, she like she's such a fascinating blend of different things from the different settings because she is from El Dorado and she knows like everything mm-hmm. about the city and she is kind of their uh, their source of information. She knows how these relationships work and stuff, but she also wants to be in on the con. <laughs> So there's like there's like the whole bit where she basically tells them like I've found you out I know what's up but I'm not going to tell anyone because I want the money. <laughs> like, yep. And that's such a wild dynamic to throw in there because now you've got someone who Miguel doesn't trust, who Tulio definitely doesn't trust, but he's also kind of into her and <laughs> there's just all sorts of she she throws the plot into chaos in such a fun and interesting way. Yeah, she really just takes action and makes uh makes the craziness happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then there are even more uh, turning wheels in this uh, oh, yeah. machine, and the, mm-hmm. even more that could go wrong and does go wrong, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, continues to raise the stakes for sure. So, anyways, they just make a great tr- trio, Definitely. or I guess quartet, if you want to add the horse. And <laughs> yes, I mean, Chell just... is is Tulio's kryptonite. She makes him break his persona. Yeah. I like, mean, he literally had a rule that she true. was off limits, and yeah. then he breaks the rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, he's the one who breaks the rule, not Miguel. That's true. That is an excellent... Because he says at the end, that when they're fighting, and he says, um, like, I can't believe you want to stay. You've bought your own con. And Miguel yes. says, at least I'm not dating mine. <laughs> yes. And he goes, <laughs> low below. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, because and there's even like an earlier jab where they're sitting at the festival. It's like the night before they're gonna like make a break for it, not knowing Sekel Khan's like gonna show up, and Miguel is like sulking at the party. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he makes some remark about Chell, and Tulio's trying to figure out like, wait, was that was that meant to be an insult? And then immediately <laughs> it's broken up by giant jaguar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Giant jaguar. <laughs> then suddenly there is a jaguar. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Are there any other favorite um, scenes, favorite moments, favorite running bit? Um, how? I mean, there's a couple we've already talked about, but I I love how Tulio, whenever he, whenever he needs to really sit down and think about something and figure something out, he needs a table. And he needs to, like, <laughs> dramatically clear everything off the table and then make little dioramas and, like, yes. gesture at stuff with his hands. <laughs> it happens, like, three <laughs> or four times, and it's always delightful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's the plan. We get on deck. I get one of those long boats. <laughs> <laughs> the boat. Long boats. Oh, the door. Man. The boat. It's great. Yeah, yeah the, the door. Little... He's the boat. He's the boat, and he's the door. And? <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, and it's always and it's always like providence that they then have a solution. Like it's always by chance. Right. Because he mm-hmm. sets up these dioramas, yeah. he sets up these plans, and then the question that he never gets to the end. There's never a last step, and then something happens that's the like bolt of inspiration. Like right, they knock the, over the cup. Yeah. The 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 oh. apple falling to give them the idea for Altivo. Like it's oh. it's never a complete idea until chance gives them the mm. answer. I don't know if I noticed that happening every time. Yeah, I would. I would have to watch it again. <laughs> I guess we got to watch it again. Yeah, yeah. what it. a bummer. I think we got to talk about the music, right? I'm so. Oh. I, I'm so. I'm so pumped. I feel like that could really, be the whole Jamie? episode. It's just really? the music. <laughs> You're excited about the music? Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it's so not like you. <laughs> um, <laughs> low blow. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Uh, so if if we're if we're fine with jumping to that particular topic, um, yeah, we're ready for it. Uh, Take it away. Give us all the all away. the geeking out. I wanted to like lead up to this and do a whole big explanation, but I'm just gonna say it, y'all. The Backstreet Boys are in this soundtrack. Wait, I missed that. <laughs> what? <laughs> they are they are uncredited. 
which is a thing I didn't even know was a thing in the film industry until now. But in the song Friends Never Say Goodbye, the background singer is going, ooh, are the Backstreet Boys, and no one knows why. (laughs) Everything else in this movie is like... Um, it's like Elton John and Tim Rice doing all the music and, uh, the lyric songs, right? And, of course, Mm -hmm. they've got their music director, and they've got their, uh, the orchestra that they put together to do the score music and stuff. And then, randomly, out of nowhere, they got the Backstreet Boys to sing, like, ooh, harmonies for this one song. (laughs) Isn't Hans Zimmer part of the Oh, yes, Hans Zimmer as well. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, he is, if I'm not mistaken, he's in charge of the, the score music that aren't um lyric songs similar That's to his work damn. for the lion king uh before this and like all all of the things he's done since obviously on zimmer yeah yeah he's on zimmer yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay that's, that's wild that's that's, <laughs> that's insane fun. that's the biggest one i wanted to share with you guys because i love it so much it just adds to the just the weird wackiness of this <laughs> the movie wacky in a way that's just like yes. perfect you know what aren't Tulio Miguel, the real Backstreet Boys? No. Shut, shut don't up. That. That's low don't, hanging fruit. Don't make me hear these you know, things. hearts, you know? With my like... ears. <laughs> um, I mean, oh like right from the beginning, the first like oh song God. song that we get. Well, uh, besides the intro. No, the intro itself is it's so, yes. so beautiful to it's look at. So El Dorado. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and it and it perfectly explains like it's it explains the the thing. It's so, the introduction. Yeah. It talks about it's a movie about El Dorado. Here's how the El city Dorado. was and then here's the movie. Um, no. But like the first the first like song that we get as a part of the film which is um, oh the trail we blaze. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. the best. I it's mean, it's the best. when when I was re-listening to this, I was like, I know for a fact, Jake's going to talk about on the trail we blaze when we do this, <laughs> and I was like, it's not that good. But then for the, about a week after watching the movie, that song was on repeat all the time, and I was like, we this is this. Well, here we come. <laughs> it's so, so good. It's it's such a bop. The trail and trapping. <laughs> oh also like a, another weird like tie-in is that like montage that we see them do from the trail we blaze um because that's the path that they follow to el dorado oh yeah um is also the path that cortez takes yeah because later on when they like go back and forth to cortez they show him at those areas like there's the rock the that the butterflies fly out of and right. then yeah. later on they show cortez oh, yeah. in front of that rock burning you know a conquested mm. yeah Shoot. Yes. Yeah. So, like the song on the trail, he blazes. Even more callbacks. Oh, oh. blazes. Ugh. I can't believe you said this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. I'll be all week. It's another callback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so many things that happen once in the first half of the movie, and then are recontextualized in a new way in the second half. Yeah. <laughs> Any other music tidbits for us, Jamie? Yes. The um the. <laughs> Well, just like y'all were talking about that opening song, I think it's just called El Dorado, although I could be wrong. But the what is playing so. with the the song is literally about uh, their basically their creation story of how the gods mm-hmm. made this city and stuff. And the animation is that happening. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. They 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 do all this crazy uh, CG stuff with like not just drawing a city, but like pulling a city out of the ground it it looks so cool and it all matches up perfectly to the music and it's absolutely wonderful but yeah when miguel and tulio get to the city the music that's playing in the background is a remix of that song and it's so much fun <laughs> i was waiting for you to say that i literally wrote my notes that the el dorado motif yeah. anytime it come in comes in oh my god yeah, but Beautiful. now instead so of satisfying. instead of Elton John this time, there's like a choir actually singing, like to oh, to wow. represent how there's all the people there now, and it's like it's oh, so wow. good. It sounds wonderful. Awesome. Probably the Backstreet Boys too. <laughs> 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 they might have. We'll never know. They were uncredited. <laughs> we'll never know. Somebody needs to get uh, Mr. Carter on the phone and get those answers right now. Yeah. <laughs> no. You probably don't get this question a lot, Mr. Carter, but I just oh, have to I know. hope he does. In the movie El Dorado. <laughs> How many ooze were you doing? How many? Yeah. <laughs> the, Love it. the only other thing is the song. It's tough to be a god. Um, it's tough to be a I, god. 
I didn't find any like super cool, fascinating things about this. I just really like it because it's really catchy, it is and it's catchy. so fun to hear them sing for the first time. Um, and they're both good singers, and like everything, all the action and all the animation is wild. And my personal favorite thing about the song is there's a bit where Tulio says that they should never rebuff something like a gift from the from the locals or or their generosity or something. Yeah. And because Miguel is ridiculous, he decides to start going oh, never rebuff, never rebuff. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that two seconds has been stuck in my head for a month. <laughs> never rebuff the look of feeling. <laughs> Yeah, and it's that same. It's an other callback to when they like first when they first get their tribute and they're back. And Tulio's going through on the one hand, gold. On the other <laughs> hand, and it switches to this tableau of sacrifice, painful, agonizing failure. Yeah, we're walking the razor's edge. Uh, I, I like though uh, we we mentioned Tarzan earlier. I feel like the music in El Dorado reminds me of Tarzan because in most Disney movies. It's the main characters doing the singing so you can understand their emotion, right? It's like a musical. But in El Dorado, most of the songs aren't that. There's just it's a like couple. like an omniscient narrator song. Yeah. Yes. And so we only get... Yeah, I would feel like Tough couple. to Be a God is very Smash the Camp from Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're... Uh, yeah, I think you're exactly... I think both movies have one song that is sung in universe by the characters, and the rest are... Wow, that's really yeah. interesting. I hadn't put that together. Is, um, wait, you know the but sad boy song. What? I forget what it's called, but the one where they're sad. They're friends never friends say anymore. goodbye. Yeah, they don't sing that. They're not singing it. They talk during it. Yeah, mm. you're right. It's Elton you're John, right. baby. Mm. I was gonna say um, they don't sing that one. That one from Tarzan, like right at the beginning. That the uh, it, but it's just the mom's perspective. It's Phil Collins. It's not the mom yep. singing. Yeah, yeah. You'll be in my heart. That's the one. Yeah. So they both they both have that style of. The music isn't the character singing, but it is about them, except for the one silly, goofy dance song. Yeah, and right. the, the one silly, goofy dance song is during an absolutely rad party in both cases. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yes, that's true. And it, it's like it's almost like because they do have one song with the character singing, it's like it, it could have been more of a musical, mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, yeah. weren't going down that path. I feel like we're not Disney. <laughs> we're not gonna stoop to that level. I mean, Tarzan, Tarzan is Disney. <laughs> Tarzan, is no, no, no. Disney. But this is DreamWorks. We're not gonna make this a musical. <laughs> yeah. right, right. You get the Prince of Egypt. To, that's it. <laughs> um, if anything, I think the difference is that, like, when you have a musical, you're heavily relying on the lyricist for story. Mm. And if we had an actual musical for Road to El Dorado. We would miss all the banter. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like there saying, wouldn't yeah. be any room for the good dialogue if it would, it would, because it would all <laughs> right. be singing. And I, you know, it's just not that type of movie. Even though I love a good animated musical, don't we would wrong. also need yeah. to have our villain song. And I just can't see Zekel Khan singing. No, or Cortez. But, but or speaking, Cortez. but speaking of him, um, and the music, like two of my favorite musical bits in the movie aren't to do with like there, there's no lyrics the first one is when they first arrive in el dorado and there's this scene where they're walking up to the, the main temple and there's two priests that go either direction and the first one you know runs up the runs up the temple steps to goes to tell no chief talabak that you know there's people here and he's like hanging out and playing with the kids and he's like super fun and nice and <laughs> wholesome and big and fat and jolly and there's nice music playing and then and it goes to the death temple and there's Zekel Khan doing some weird <laughs> spiritual like uh, you know in front of the the weird you know he pushes the guy away and um, that like dichotomy between their two like sound moti is just mm, so good because it's like in that moment you know who these people are like as oh, soon as yeah. they walk up and start talking you know who these people are and who they are to each other <laughs> I would argue that Zekel Khan is the real antagonist of the movie not Cortez yeah I think so yeah oh, <laughs> I mean he's the one who antagonizes the main characters the most Cortez is just kind of the history setting <laughs> But he he is the the at the very end he is the main threat. You don't want his army getting in there. Yeah, but it's Zekel Khan that, that is causing. There. Yeah, that leads him to it. All right, okay. <laughs> you yeah, know, I I think I could because uh, Cortez is more just like another resource for him to mm-hmm. use in mm-hmm. his 
own villainous ways. Yeah, he certainly thinks that that is uh, that is the relationship until he realizes right. he can't find the city anymore, and he suddenly realizes that he is the expendable one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I I would argue that Miguel and Tulio are their own antagonists. Oh, oh. valid. Oh. <laughs> I would argue Altivo is the no. <laughs> wrong. Altivo is best boy. <laughs> Everyone's an antagonist. Okay. <laughs> My, the other like non singing musical moment that I love is um, uh, Miguel when he like when Chell encourages him to just run off and explore the city for her own devious yeah. purposes. Um, in the end, uh, when he finds out that, you know, they've been making a lot of decisions without really understanding the consequences of their decisions, and he makes a connection with, like, a local, but and, like, the, with the kids playing music, um, and there's this, like, up beat where he starts playing the like primitive guitar and then that turns into you know a nice party and that turns into the ball game and it all just kind of like snowballs off of itself that scene of miguel with the kids genuinely made me smile i'm like this is this is wholesomeness this is this is beautiful i agree i agree and i love even in the the ball game they play they have to it, turn it into a con because they can't do anything right. on their own. I mean, that's their superpower is yep. they can uh, con everybody. Well, yeah, because yeah. Tulio, in, in trying to, like, protect and keep the con going, he, like, tells Zeko Khan everything he wants to hear and then keeps telling Zeko Khan everything he wants to hear, which then allows him to say, okay, do it for real. Big ball game. Let's go. Yes. Two versus everybody. Right. You can do it. You're oh, gods, right? God. Right. right, but he bleeds. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. That's, oh spirals. Oh my god, that's such a good line when he figures it out too. Because yes. like he goes back to his temple with that clueless little helper dude, um, and he's just like, "Why do you know why the gods demand sacrifice? Because gods don't bleed." And like it's mm. so creepy. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's got it's got like it's a it's an interesting line on its own, but you also realize he's saying that because he saw blood. And he's mm-hmm. just like, oh, I figured it out. Yikes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. so cool. That that ball game scene accomplishes like six different things in the story. Now that I think about it, it's very impressive. <laughs> I didn't even think that it was, you know, that uh, integral to the plot. But actually, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's very central. <laughs> the whole plot it, it, is super dense. It like compact. builds on. It's very tight. It's very tight script. Agreed. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it, it builds on their relationship with Chell because she helps them cheat with the armadillo. Mm-hmm. It um it bolsters their relationship with the people because they choose to spare the other team and it solidifies yeah who they are um and then miguel like takes a stand and takes charge and they cast off zekel khan yeah for good and choose chief talabak for for real for he's our homie not you and (laughs) like in that moment like they lose basically yeah and at one point while they're still playing they just jump on the horse (laughs) Yes, and you don't even realize how silly it looks because the music is intense and stuff. But they just keep playing. <clears throat> just keep going. Like I said, he's Altivo, integral to the plot. <laughs> it's his story, really. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's not El Dorado. It's Altivo. Altivo. That's the movie. There it is. Do you guys know El Dorado literally translates to the Golden Man? I know it was gold. Interesting. Yeah. I. I have heard people translate it as just the gold. So I don't the know gold. if, but, but also let's be real. Spanish could have changed drastically. Um, that since, was since the stories time. of El Dorado have been the gilded thing, you know? one. That's Ooh. gilded one. That's my one critique with the whole movie is that supposedly everyone speaks Spanish. There's no language yeah. barrier. There's no language barrier. There's no oh, language yeah. barrier. Because it's a That's kid's true. movie, Nathan. I, yeah. Didn't even think about that. It's a suspension I, of disbelief. I don't know. I can handle a gold city. I can handle... <laughs> I can this handle is all, all believable. The, uh, talking all the friendly religious horse. magic. The, the mocap jaguar god. <laughs> yeah, That's fine. But they don't have any language issues. I don't... Get yeah. real. They're, they're in yeah, a really... Just completely sus- cuts my suspicion of it. disbelief. Wow. I lost it. <laughs> really took me out of the movie. Took the movie from a 10 to a 2. Uh, I don't know if I would want them 
to try <laughs> explaining it. I don't know if I would want any attempt at that because it's probably going to be too impossible no matter what you try to write in. No, it's better you know? just to ignore it, yeah. It might be better to yeah. just ignore it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of examples of when they've done this like tried to do the language thing in other animated movies and I'm having a hard time coming up with any other than Tarzan because we were just talking about it and they teach him how to speak. Right. Yeah. That's also like that's part of the plot of like him learning to be human. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, historically, Cortez wasn't the first person in the New World. Hernando de Soto was. And so it's not crazy to think that there were like Spanish and conquistadors oh. in the Americas before Cortez. But also, El Dorado was kind of like, sh- you know, sheltered away. Right, and also, DeSoto only made it to the Mississippi before he died, so. Oh, okay. I did a book report in middle school on this, so I know, like, some stuff, but. Um, yeah, you remember information from your schooling career much better than I do. Nothing useful <laughs> yeah. to my life outside of just silly things and fun stuff like this. Mm-hmm. That's what your TikTok is for. I, I'm trying to think if I have any, like, nitpicks. It's so good. No, it really is a great movie. Yeah, I have none. I have no critiques on this film. It's it's amazing. It's fun and enjoyable. It's I don't care about the language thing. <laughs> I I love because because again, there's like the, the 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 one against the other, sure, but there's these beautiful moments where they are these li- like grandiose, larger than life. Um, gods they're playing the gods and that's what gets them into trouble right right um that's what causes trouble for them um but when they are being themselves that's when they get stuff done like um when they first get the tribute miguel decides to we're gods let's be gods to shibalba and then that goes wrong because the gold goes away and chal has to (laughs) to save them and bring them back it's the same thing in the ball game where Miguel steps up and he's a god and he, you know, has to stand up to Zekel Khan and that's what gets him in trouble later. Um, okay. But when they're just themselves, you know, they sit down very boardroom meeting like with Chief Talabak and they're like, Yeah, so um we need a boat. Um <laughs> our our egress, you know, we we they need to uh more of a horizontal, horizontal vertical. pattern. Horizontal and then and we'll uh, go <laughs> vertical. And you know, uh, there's your plan and then there's the God's plan and the God's plan, you know, we need a boat. <laughs> And it's all very both, like matter of fact, good. and yeah. Yeah, 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 both both is good. Um, and when they when they're themselves, they're fine. But when they mm-hmm. take on this, the, when they bite off more than they can chew, that's what makes mm-hmm. problems for themselves. And in the yeah. beginning, when they go for the map and go bet the map. more than they have with the loaded <laughs> dice, that's what gets them in trouble. Um, I can imagine that they will continue and always bite off more than they can chew. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the whole never thing. Never learn. That's they, their they ride off into the jungle to their next big screw up. I mean, adventure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Khan. <laughs> Zekel Khan. Yes. <laughs> He's yeah. the biggest Khan al Alam. <laughs> uh, the last two th- notes I had was one is an Easter egg in Zekel Khan's like, dark magic book. They have the DreamWorks logo in there there's like a really? kid sitting oh, really? on a moon no oh, way um, they also have the shrek pages. in there oh my God. i didn't see that one one of the pages is shrek oh funny. yeah when he's Sh- shrek hadn't even come out yet i was gonna yeah. say wasn't this before shrek yeah this was weird before shrek. hold on hold yeah, on, hold on. okay okay what? this is the third dreamworks movie you've got ants first then prince of egypt <gasps> then road to el dorado and shrek i think was 2001 Yep. So it really was magic. So it was in. So it was still in production when they released. Um, Not bad. So like Alderado, a, pre- so. a prequel Easter egg. <laughs> yeah, pretty fun though. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. How is Prince of Egypt their only their second movie? It's so good. That's incredible. I know. I think I'm I mean, wrong. I don't think Shrek is in it. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, bummer. Don't lie to no, us. No, it's crazy that uh, the Prince of Egypt is like i mean it was supposed to be there first it's kind of like the reason dreamworks exists is the prince of egypt mm. but then and it was it was going to be released before ants but then you know production happens they have and they ended up releasing ants first but they wanted to they, they wanted their first pass at like a movie <laughs> to be the most famous story on the planet <laughs> that seems I so know, risky it's pretty ambitious isn't it <laughs> it is a weird thing to think that yeah the 
the Bible is why we have Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever say those words to me again, please, sir. Uh, oh, boy. I'm not wrong, oh, though. Man. No. That's valid. This is the crazy story of DreamWorks, and I love it. Yeah. I love. I just. I love DreamWorks. They're the underdog. Do I love all of their current movies? No, but <laughs> they've True. they've got some spunk. They sure do. <laughs> they have attitude. Also, like I, I love that. Like a, another bookend is like right when they get marooned on land after escaping uh cap- ca- captivity on Cortez's ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Tulio's first plan is to row back to Spain, <laughs> not knowing where they are, not knowing yeah. where they came from. Um his first plan is to just get in the rowboat and go home. Right. And row back to Spain. Yes. Like there's no manana. <laughs> and at the end of the movie that's his plan that's their getaway plan it's still they're just plan. gonna sail back to spain that's still the plan is just get in boat arrive in spain this time <laughs> laden with gold right and so like of course it doesn't work like <laughs> the plan was doomed from the beginning I, it makes me wonder if they genuinely mm-hmm. have no scale of how big the ocean is because they were like unconscious for a lot of it. <laughs> well, probably it not because also this was like pretty early, um, you know, exploration time. So like they probably d- didn't know. Yeah, the earth yeah. was still flat. Yeah. They just don't even know what an ocean is in this case. It was all done in a montage. So it felt really quick. They were in pickle <laughs> barrels for most of it. Yeah, yeah. There's two songs that I very, very briefly, one of them is what I call the main adventure theme. I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to look it up, but it sounds so cool. And it goes dun 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 dun. It sounds, it's very epic. It shows up like five times. If you if you can picture the song I'm talking about, it's, it, I, I'm a big fan. The other song that's the best song in the movie is um, when the guy at the beginning <laughs> realizes their dice are fake. <laughs> and he goes, I knew it! And Miguel pulls up his mantle and he goes, da 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 Another very memeable that. page. Like, how, how often is music the punchline? Like, I love that so much. I'm, I'm, it makes me so happy just seeing that be a thing. It's maybe my favorite second of film. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. No, it's hilarious. I don't see it a lot. Yeah. You, I mean, hey inspiration ideas for night's quest oh yes we do that sometimes yeah yeah we said jamie put the music here we plan sometimes yeah that's true i've done that to myself and i always regret it yeah like i'll say in the episode like oh and then we hear some music and then i'm later on i'm like why did i take it now i have to make the music (laughs) yes um a lot to love about this film. Yeah. It's just it's just fun. It's just pure entertainment. And I love it more and more every time I watch it. I highly recommend that you guys go and look up that music video somewhere out of the blue from the movie. Yeah, I need it's, to go do it's that. It's very yeah. good. I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen it go watch the movie. Watch the movie. Uh, yeah. Shit. Good movie. What are you doing? It's one of the best. It's so memeable. It's yeah, so go watch it. Get out there. Watch it. Oh wait, it's not on anywhere. Go get it from Block, but oh. Oh. Oh, on Dis. No. On oh. Ne- oh. You can probably you probably <laughs> got to pay for it on an extension somewhere. Then you can get it on YouTube yeah. for a couple bucks. I mean, you can step out of your house for five minutes and try the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. If you still have a DVD player, or whatever yeah. those are, lol. Or you got a disc <laughs> reader in your. None of the three of us, even for a second, considered renting it from the library. <laughs> No, I mean if you got if you got an Xbox, you got a PlayStation. Those play DVDs. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, hey, they now now they make an Xbox without a, a CD DVD slot. Oh my gosh, PlayStation Two, yeah. Where I, I, this is off, totally off topic, and I know we're trying to wrap up the episode, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I am kind of just like. Uh, many years behind because I'm like I still have DVDs and no DVD player yeah. and it's becoming obsolete. Yeah. What's there, happening? There is a there oh, is a, a fun and an interaction with media that comes with having a tactile interaction with it, like being able to hold it and touch it and interact with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, like 
it informs the experience. Yep. Well, I was I was reading about it, and uh, on the Polygon website, there was a writer named Patrona Rajulovic, I want to get their name correct, uh, said that the film had an unexpected rise in popularity as an internet meme, even though it's 20 years after it's been released. Quote, found a second life and long-lasting legacy since it came out at the perfect time to make it a nostalgic movie for people who grew up with the internet. I thought that was really cool. Mm. I thought that was a really interesting take on it, because I hadn't considered that in terms of uh, its time span. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally true. Yeah. And like we said, very memeable. Lots. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely Lots so. So definitely check out Road to El Dorado if you haven't already. Um, if you want to hear even more fun banter about animation and silly things, I have a ton of bonus episodes um, on patreon.com slash fanimated you can even Mm -hmm. vote for upcoming episode topics over there which is super cool um you can follow fanimated on instagram facebook and youtube at fanimated podcast to stay up to date with all things animated and don't forget to leave a rating and review telling us what you'd like us to watch next the music is of course written by the one the only the jamie Krause. oh stop who's that <laughs> what? I don't know. Just some dude, I guess. Some loser uh, <laughs> with the same name as me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's actually it's pretty good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Krause voiced in this uh, episode of Phantom Minute by Jibbers Krabs. <laughs> <laughs> um, the art is done by myself. You can find me on Instagram at Draw, And we'll be back with more animation discussion soon. So in the meantime, stay tuned. And stay animated. So that's our our a uh, whole bunch of creative, funny, strange college friends. So we have friends, us. okay? We, We're cool. We have friends. Yeah, we have friends. <laughs> Wait, Why what? did you say that so defensively? <laughs> <laughs> like someone out there is listening to us and they're going, "I bet these guys don't have friends." <laughs> <laughs> these are losers that watch kids' movies. I bet it's Emma. <laughs> Emma, oh, no. no. <laughs> You're gonna bash Emma? She's not even here. That's what I'm saying. That she's sitting here listening to this. Like these guys don't have any friends. I know them. I'm friends (laughs) with them. They don't have any friends. She's just friends to us. She's friends to us. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) We we are we are blessed to be in her presence. Yeah, she's she's gracing us by being friends with us. Shut up. Shut up. Okay. (laughs) Shut up. Should we, we get to the show? <laughs> yeah. This can't Let's all talk just about be... the road to El Dorado. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. We have this so much to talk about. This can't all just be memes about our friends. That's not yes. going to be funny to <laughs> anyone else. This is all going to get cut. I don't know. All right. I don't have that power anymore. <laughs> I have the power now to cut things oh, that man, are not. Scary. You have no power here. I don't like that. <laughs>